The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. RPG podcast. This is a show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system created by Fantasy Flight Games and produced by Edge Studios. A show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both a player's and a GM's perspective. I am Tony Fanning, and with me as always are my good friends and co-hosts, Chris Holmes and Stefan Dragonspawn. How the hell are you, fellas? Chris? i not doing so good. My Vikings lost today. Fucking kickers, man. There's a goddamn curse here in Minnesota with our kickers. And it's wow. going through this guy's like armor, man. He's like this he's the sixth most accurate quarter, uh kicker in NFL history. But you come to Minnesota, you're gonna miss shit. Anyways. And you go out and pick up Ray Finkel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yes they do. <laughs> He'll be better. She'll be better. He'll be better. Whatever it is. Anyways, Aces out. that is is. But you know what? Played some ran some Star Wars last night. For my um, Saturday night group, um, that was fun. And yeah, been doing some gaming. Yeah, but things are good, man. Life is good. How about you, Stefan? I'm good too. Third time is a charm, right, Tony? And uh, <laughs> indubitably. And, uh, no, I'm doing good too. Uh, finally, getting some role playing as well. No, no, November was uh, a bit of a bust uh, as games were. Had to be suspended, but uh, you know, playing some Star Wars last Thursday, it was cool. Oh yeah, a bit more role playing, a bit more role playing, and not all the roles were sucky. That's good. <laughs> and I joined you guys also on uh, the other game there that we play, uh, the uh, D Shift Seven D game that Jamie's running. Yes. That's pretty cool. You Just got to find the my character's voice. You so. got to experience the Arn Skull bl- Brothers. What do you think of yes. those guys? <laughs> <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> that's that's what my character's thinking. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. I got some gaming, so that's right. And how are you, Tony? Uh, I am fresh back from Night City to visit mm-hmm. for just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I have been. Uh, <laughs> my wife is is a gamer widow. Uh, Thursday. <laughs> Uh, at midnight, uh, actually Wednesday night, yeah. while I was running my um, Eberron campaign on Fantasy Grounds for my local game store group, my freaking computer started downloading Cyberpunk and completely bogged down Fantasy Grounds, and we had to end the session a little early. <laughs> uh, and so then, yeah, I tried it out and missed out on sleep a little bit uh, Wednesday night, then like... I've put in about 14 hours of gameplay and including all day today. Mm-hmm. Uh, been playing a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 on my PC, so it's quality gaming. There you go. I right. hear a lot of people are having problems with it on console. And ha ha! That's right. You know, sleep is overrated, and you can sleep yeah. when you're dead. You know? So. Yeah. <laughs> and, another, and another thing I, I forgot to mention is that uh, the last couple of days I binge watched the. Uh, what has come out so far of season two of the Mandalorian. So we can all discuss it now. And yeah. Yeah. no, 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 there's <laughs> people way who haven't happen. watched the baby Yoda show this, uh, yeah. this year. No, no. Yet, so, and that's a different, no, I'm not podcast. saying discuss it on, <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not just uh, suggesting we discuss it on the show here, but we'll be able to discuss amongst ourselves. Oh yes. Without yes, uh, you guys worrying about spoiling it for me. I'll just have one episode left to, uh, to wait for Spoiler. next Friday. So yeah, there's only one episode. So spoiler-free review of the season. It is the single most best, awesomest uh, season yeah. of a television program ever. Yeah, that it was, was awesome opinion. when that Borg Cube showed up. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, and then, the, yes. and of course, the Reavers were there too. So fuck that. Right. Well, yeah. So luckily, Doctor Who showed up and defeated all of them. So. Exactly. <laughs> Thankfully, Harry Potter could clean up the mess. Oh, so, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, well, you shall not pass anyway. So fuck it. Right? Well, <laughs> I mean, Lego, luckily, on. Legolas was there. Uh, you know. 
<laughs> All, right. All right. Anyway. So, uh, we're coming up on the holidays. We decided we were going to do a show about specialization trees. So, we've got episode 72 for you. Oh, specialization tree. Oh, specialization tree. <laughs> we're going to try to build you. <laughs> We'll very and then nice describe down. how to build a tree, <laughs> and then we'll I'm gonna stop decorate it with talents. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I didn't intend to sing a whole song. We'll have many tears. We'll have many columns. We'll have some connections. And all right, let's go. All right, let's get signal. into it then. <laughs> Signal. Promise there will not be any more singing in this episode. I have my <laughs> no promises. No promises. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> anyway, so yes, this is the session part of the show where Stefan shares all the hot and steamy Genesis news, fresh off the wire, reviews a project from Edge Studio from the Edge Studio section of the DT RPG Drive Through RPG, formerly known as the Foundry. What you got for us, Stefan? Well, first off, thank you, Chris. It's always nice to be boosted by you. So, oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yep. Yeah. So, um, today we have from a uh, friend of the show who was, he was a guest a little while back, uh, Keith Keppel, Keith Ryan Keppel, came up with another fantastic little supplement uh, for Genesis. Uh, called Factions. Factions 1, to be precise. So that hints that there might be more coming out. So basically, he details a bit more how to create an organization, a faction, uh, a group mm -hmm. that can show up in your in any campaign or setting. Uh, he includes a few examples some are mil there's one military, some are generic, like one military, one corporate, uh, one government faction, cool. and a few others just as an idea. And you can take them and twist them. But the first one that came to mind for me from an animated series, Cobra! <laughs> 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 so, you know, goes over a bit awesome. some detail. What, what's the the benefits of being part of an organization and what's the, its goals and uh, its resources, uh, et cetera, which can be maybe a good, uh, good way to, to get some PCs together and be part of a organization or to face an organization like that. Cool. So this isn't specifically for, so this isn't specifically for like key forge or I think in shadow nope. of the beanstalk they had, were they factions in shadow beanstalk too? Okay. They, they mentioned factions. Yeah. Group. But they're they just mentioning very loosely a couple of paragraphs whether they their aims and stuff. But gotcha. in here he goes into much a bit more detail on how to organize it. Uh, maybe give it some stats. He includes specific talents that would maybe uh, revolve around uh, the uh, the factions themselves, the groups. And he has three specific ones that includes, for example, the Order of the Pure Stone. And the HRO division. Cool. Uh, so, and of course, new rules for creating your own factions uh, for characters to join and advance within, as he says. So it's a pretty good book. I, I didn't have time, unfortunately, to read the whole thing, but it's very nice uh, faction book. Uh, quite a few pages, lots of meat to it, uh, and not too expensive. Two ninety nine. So I we'll have the link in the show notes. So go check uh, check that out. Factions 1, a faction talent supplement for Genesis. Thank you, Keith. And I hope uh, that helps uh, boost your signal, a bit more publicity uh, for it, and hope it helps maybe any uh, GM out there uh, to uh, to add this kind of thing to your, your, your setting, to your campaign. I know so I'm going to use it for creating Dale's organization in Primordial Machina, the coalition to liberate uh, intelligent techno beings. Oh, well, there you go. And 
you, we could even use it if you wanted to uh, flesh out the uh, the lumberjacks. Yes, we, we could. To. Yes, we could. Cool. So that's it. Thank you very much, Keith. All right. Well done, Seth. Thank you. Our next show segment is one you haven't heard in a while because we gave it, we put it on the shelf, venerated it, placed it up there, glanced at it every once in a while, and now we have pulled it down off the shelf to share it with you. And that is 50 Pieces of Awesome. This is where Chris finds something cool on the web that was not put out on the foundry, and he shares it with you, puts it on your radar. And then we decide whether it gets an award at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Tony, for that. Um, So let me tell you a little story. What's been happening the last couple months for me. Um, This isn't something I found on the web. This is something that I read on the web. I got an email from a um, Professor William Dwyer from the Miskatonic University because I looked at the email. I'm like, I don't recognize this person. Miskatonic.net was sent from. I'm like, uh oh, somebody wants to do a Call of Cthulhu campaign, but there's three people that could potentially run one for me. You, Tony, Jamie, we were kind of talking about it at the, about this time. And I asked you guys, hey, did you guys see this email? You're like, oh no, did I get one too? And I'm like, okay, it wasn't you. Um, so then I um, reached out to my buddy Kyle Scott who's been running our um, D&D campaigns on Friday night. Um, Yeah, he sent us an email. Then he sent me a puzzle box. Open it up. Had a little key. Mm. Sent my other buddy a chest and a puzzle box. And a third buddy, another puzzle box. We open it up. We all have keys. Jeff has this thing. Yesterday, Jeff and I meet in a parking lot. (laughs) We open up the chest, okay? We have three Cthulhu idols in it that look like book bookshelves, right? Like little book bookends. Then we take that out, and there are three, um, what do you call it, investigator guides in the bottom of this chest, okay? First off, we, t- we taped it. We, we taped a video. didn't tape real well. I asked him if it was a mimic, and if it was, I was going to kill him. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I'm looking at this thing, and yes, what do I think, Tony? It's fucking mimic. It's going to attack me. <laughs> this is real life. Oh, my gosh. I'm playing too much role-playing games. No, I didn't yeah. say that, did I? No. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, but it is, so there, it is 2020. Right. So there, are three, so there are three investigator guides. Books. There are six envelopes that say artifact A, open when instructed, artifact B, blah, 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 and some more handouts and such. So, yeah, we're going to be playing Call of Cthulhu. That was fucking cool. So I tell you that to tell you this. I want to give 50 pieces of awesome because we've actually, it's been on the shelf. I did a little bit of investing. We got a lot of pieces of awesome out there to donate out. All of you dungeon masters, game masters, judges, keepers of the arcane lore that have initiative to get a Get your friends together. Run a game. You get 50 pieces of awesome from me. Because especially during this time, the pandemic, everything going on, people gaming more, just you GMs, Tony, Stefan, Jamie, all of you other guys running running games for me, thank you so much. Um, got me through all this. And it's, I'm sure it's getting through, getting everybody else through this so um kudos to all of you guys here's your reward any questions comments thank you both by the way oh thank you oh, my pleasure yeah well you can't leave yourself out of that you have to give yourself 50 you can reinvest yeah. it because well, yeah. you do run games for people I'll, yeah. I'll take a little off the top don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but no yeah. problem you know, I, you know, yes. 
there are so many people out there that are having a hard time. And mm. um, for those who are taking the time to run games for other people and help us escape from the difficulty of life, you do deserve 50 mm. pieces of awesome yep. from us. Yep. yep. I'm going to do a little shout out. If you allow me, uh, I won't name names, but uh, I've had a couple of friends that have thanked me sometimes, just sometimes for chatting, either on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, uh, going through these era, p- tough periods. Sometimes I didn't even know they were going through tough periods, but it's like, you know, I'm just talking about this game that uh, or uh, something else uh, helps. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, reach out to us. Reach out to friends. When you think your your things are going hard or diff- more difficult, you've got friends out there. You'll, but there's bound to be one at one point. They'll take a few minutes and talk to you, chat with you, and uh, make me feel better. Maybe to, that's right about you uh, for that day, and that may help you get on to another day. So yeah, that's right. uh, good call out. Uh, Chris, sometimes you don't. We don't think about these things, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. All the bad stuff coming out uh, sometimes, and right. the year has been really tough. Uh, mm-hmm. Some it people have uh, have shared some uh, some nasty memes. Some were pretty funny memes to try and get us through it. That's right. Uh, I've seen one recently where uh, the Christmas ornament looks like a dumpster on fire, basically. Uh, yeah, no, with the words twenty, the letters twenty twenty on it. I was like, yeah, that's it wow. Seems to be like what it fits. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> That's great, but we digress. Plastic dumpster. Yes, sorry. <laughs> but we digress a little bit. So, but for Kyle, <laughs> Jeff and I had a blast opening that shit up last yesterday. <laughs> you all don't have to go that far, as my buddy Kyle. If you do, that'd be great. But every little bit helps. Getting a game together, it's all it's all it takes. And you know what? Just have fun doing it. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to our main section of the show, the Books of Genesis. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 specialization tree. Specialization oh, special- tree. oh, wait a second. We said we weren't going to sing anymore. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said that. I did. Well, true. <laughs> so this is where we break down a section of one of the books in Genesis bit by bit. Um, uh, we are we going chop to chop it down in- like a tree. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Got a theme going here. Um, so open up your expanded players guides to pages uh, one o two, um, where we're going to talk about specialization trees. Um, yeah. So there's a few things in here that we need to start talking about. So these specialization trees. This is an artifact from the Star Wars RPG. Where you know the careers had specializations and such, and we're gonna kind of dive into that. What a tree is. Um, so, what is a specialization tree, gentlemen? Well, this, in, normally in Genesis, in the core rulebook, we have uh, a system of tiers with which we purchase our um, talents, and they go incrementally up you have to have more of the it's a pyramid Mm -hmm. you have to have more of the lower level before you can buy the next level um uh, in these started in star wars uh they are a a tree of 20 talents arrayed uh in order of tier one at the top tier five at the bottom in rows of four Uh, and Five rows, you, four columns, basically. Yep, yeah. Five rows, four columns. You purchase them by following pathways uh, of lines that connect the talents together. Mm-hmm. And um, you start by buying one of any one of the Tier 1 talents, and then you work your way around the tree from there. That's right. So, um, so why would we use these in our game? got a few reasons in here in the book let's go through yeah these. they do have yeah well, the first one they, they mentioned why would be maybe because you want a theme so each tree usually reinforces a particular a particular theme that supports the setting or the tone of the game 
Uh, a tree may focus on close combat, social interaction, stealth, intimidation, uh, etc. Depending on the, the exact career. Cool. Uh, what's, what's the other one? What else do we have? What do you got, Tony? What's next? Uh, so we have uh, limiting the options. So in some cases, instead of, because now we have four books plus all the internet resources, we have a ton of talents out there. Maybe as a GM, you've decided that this, if I create these trees, the players can only buy the talents that are in the trees. You limit the talents uh, selection. And so players aren't buying talents that you think might break the game or um, don't fit into your story. That's right. And it don't suffer from our buddy Daryl's problem, which is analysis paralysis. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Looking at 200 talents going, what do I take? I want to take yeah. them all. <laughs> <laughs> or I've taken these four talents on the last eight characters I've played. You know what? I'm going to play them. I'm going to take them again. You know, the most yeah. popular talents, right? <clears throat> right. Mm-hmm. Which kind of leads into the next one where it can promote unique characters. So mm-hmm. this talent tree for a, say, a, um, I don't know, like a, like a soldier um, who's specialized in, like, maybe close quarters combat would be completely different from a mage that is specializing in magics, right? Or a lumberjack who's specializing in um, leadership, or something along those lines, right? So um, it'll promote unique characters. Uh, That's certainly a thing I see a lot is in our games, and we I have run a ton of Genesis, probably more than mm-hmm. um, any of the three of us. Yeah. Um, and I see the players because I I run mine online, so I see all the characters. I see them taking the same. 15 talents over and over and over. And this way, when you build the trees, you can build them with uh, emphasis on not so much requiring players to take those same 15 talents over and over. Yeah. And you'll yeah. see them, you'll exactly. see them spread out a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like the first few times we don't ran advantageous threats. Sometimes, you know, we, we made a joke about, Oh, I have a character who has knack for it again. What? Wow. <laughs> but eventually I think, uh, yeah, you know, it's a good talent. But sometimes I would try to avoid that. It's like make a conscious choice. Like, no, no. Pick another one that that's can be interesting. <laughs> so. That's right. So what's what other alternative? what other reasons do we consider it, Stefan? Uh, then you also have it's also like a side benefit is the you can access higher tier talents more quickly. Because you don't have to follow the, the pyramid structure. So even if you only have one or two tier one talents, you can still get access to maybe a one tier two, and then uh, the next one up if you follow the tree to a tier three right away. Mm-hmm. So it all depends can... on the pathways between the talents more exactly. so than the need to buy a an entire row of talents. Exactly. Well, that's it. So, you, so you can make your way maybe directly to that one talent that you really want at tier uh, tier five. But once you've got it, then you can branch out to uh, the other uh, towns you skipped over previously. That's right. Which, what's our last and one? And what else? That kind of relates to this last one, right, Tony? Right. And those pathways provide you with some uh, uh, interesting decisions if the talent tree is constructed well. Um, and those players have to make those tough choices. You know, do I, do I go for, well, I've got 15 XP. And if I if I save this session that 15 XP and don't spend it, and I get 10 or 15 next time, I can take that tier five talent at, as you know the on the mm-hmm. session two uh, of the game, mm-hmm. or uh, I could uh, I could just spend it on those lower tier talents. So some interesting, I see it with Star Wars all the time. Interesting. Yeah choices where people right. are just like i so want all these talents yeah. yeah like like for instance there could be a there could be a decision where i've got i'm all the way down i can decide whether i want to take dedication for 25 xp mm-hmm. or i can immediately take say i can go over to the over to the right and take say parry rank two right for thir- for 15 xp and I'm like well okay you know that's kind of good so yeah 
it, it does lead to interesting decisions to make. Makes more makes the game a little more fun for those of you who wanna who enjoy that stuff too. Well, it's a, you know, as an as an example, my my Star Wars character is a bounty hunter, but a skip tracer, and I managed to get all the way to, to tier tier five to get dedication. Yep. Uh, but I still have lots of stuff uh, below in tier three, four, and five. That I can I can still take. Right. Yeah, so well, I had 20, like, what yeah, do I, I do had, next? Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I had 25 XP last session to spend, and I could either it, to the right is dedication, to mm. the left is a plus one to my soak. Oh, and I just mm. got smoked that session too, or whatever. Like, ooh, extra <laughs> yeah. soak would be kind of be good, but yeah. you know, yeah. beefier or even having a better willpower would have been better too. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yep. it's cool. It's cool stuff. <laughs> so, um. So let's see. So what next we have here is how do we introduce them into our game? How do we use them in our game? Um, there are basically two ways you can use these, right? You can you can link these specialization trees to a specific career, and we'll go into how yep. that works, right? Um, or you can create a generic specialization that's not linked to a career um, that you can that that your players can can take as well. So, what does it mean by linking a, uh, a specialization tree to a career, career there, Tony? What are we talking about there? Well, this is how Star Wars has done it, and uh, what it is is that um, the specialization uh, is focused on the aspects of that career. So, for example, a soldier career speciali- uh, specializations could present training for different types of soldiers, a mechanized combat specialist, a, co- a commando, or an officer. You're going to want two to three uh, of these specializations per career if you want to um, brand, you know, sh- show that difference in uh, in those that type of training uh, in this uh, system you create the specialization you should also assign four career skills to it uh, and they were um, some will overlap with the career skills of the specialization career and yeah, there's think, a reason for that yeah I think they, they and, recommend not having any more than two of those that overlap right there should be two that overlap or duplicate and then two that are unique minimum yep. Um and uh, that's a great way to look at it. And um, so when the, a character takes the specialization, they gain the specialization's c- skills as career skills. So if they're already in the career, they don't gain an additional career skill for the ones that overlap. They just gain the two that they didn't have previously. Mm-hmm. Um, however, they get the boost for um, if they're in career with it, that um, it costs less for them to buy into that tree. Um, yeah, uh, and the reasons for that are twofold. Um, by providing additional career skills, the specialization can ensure the characters take it have additional career skills that are useful. So if you're buying into the, that specialization from outside of the career, you still have some of the career skills that are part of it, you know, the right, stuff right. that is integral to the specialization. Yeah, so the mechanized, so maybe say we, so you take an example for like the soldier career, right? And we mm-hmm. want to create a mechanized combat specialist who's basically vehicle related talents, right? So you'd have something maybe, I don't know, what is it? Um, punch it? No, not punch it. That was it. That was the other one. Um, you may have like defensive driving might be one that they would get. Um, but they would probably also have maybe a melee skill, you know, and have that. Um, and maybe right, right. You're talking talents skills. versus skills, though. Right, uh, talents versus driving skills. isn't a isn't a skill. Um, the, oh the yeah, oh, thing is, um, <laughs> you're right. Sorry, driving as driving a skill. or piloting, driving. depending or piloting, depending yeah. on how on how you are running it in your game. Right, but yes, driving or piloting. Uh, then you would have a gunnery skill, and then you know if you're talking mechanized soldier, yeah, you want to you, you want to utilize that that melee aspect or the the brawl side of being able to punch with mechanized fists so you want a brawl skill and maybe maybe since he focused on his gear he's got mechanics uh to to tweak it and repair it Mm -hmm. um those that would be a great yeah that'd be a great way to to but then your officer spec 
would have, you know, he'd still have the the hand to hand combat. So he'd have, maybe have the brawl. Um, he'd still have um, maybe a range light. Uh, uh, a combat skill range light. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he'd have leadership, and maybe you know he's used to. You want him to be able to do field repairs as well, so you throw mechanics on his as well. Mm-hmm. I, well okay. th- there's ways around it. A um, bit of intimidation, let's say. <laughs> trying to motivate you want two, the <laughs> You want two skills that overlap. Two that they don't have to be the that same enhance. two for each career uh, spec no. either. Um, they wouldn't be so, really. They would focus on. If you're, they would focus on. I think that specialization, specific mm-hmm. to that specialization. Yeah. Correct. Um, and the second thing is that this this method guarantees that um, the oh I already covered that the players who are buying it from outside get some of the career get a sampling of the career yeah. skills. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, but it also means that those who are in that career get to double up on some of those skills um, at character creation. So that's um you know when you get a career skill. You can put that second rank in it, um, and it'll show that you're specialized in that field. Yep. Yeah. For for starting in uh, a starting character, because you cannot go you higher know, than I two did, ranks for starting character. You know, so. I didn't I didn't see that. Um, so when we when we do add the specializations, right? So for character creation, you pick your career. You have your eight skills. You pick four of them. You mm-hmm. have four ranks. Mm-hmm. When we add a specialization tree, which I think you you get one for free, we'll go into that. I think there's a sidebar that talks about that. I don't I don't remember seeing how. Do you get any more than the four ranks for free? Because I know in Star I don't Wars they added it. they added another two. That yeah, I don't a, see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe they no, missed I don't it, think or I, maybe it's an option. I don't think I read it. Yeah, I never read it. No, but. Uh. Anyways, but you you could house rule it, you know that uh, if you already have a skill as part of your career and it also appears in the speci- specialization, you maybe get get a free rank in it up to a maximum of two if it's that character creation. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, anyhow, how is the um, what's the uh, second method there, Stefan? Uh, so. Oh, Second I'm method? skipping. No. So I'm skipping ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, okay. I'm skipping ahead. Um, like how so, many? how many specializations do we need? I already covered that for this, the career, uh, but the it's skill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, they recommend about three. Yeah. Right, two but to three. Whatever you choose, but but whatever you choose, whether it's two or three, every career should have the same number. Yeah, yeah. and that means if you have nine careers, you're going to be creating somewhere between eighteen and twenty-seven. Uh, yeah. Well, 18 or 27, or if you're doing four per 36, even um, yeah. specialization trees. Different <laughs> specialization trees, so that takes a lot of prep time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong also with asking your players maybe to participate. You know, if uh, they have ideas for uh, for a soldier type, like, ask them to uh, to come up with some trees. Yep. yep. And you can always revise them and say, yeah, that's not not quite, but you can tweak them, but Reducing your your workload. Why not? Yep. G- give that player some extra XP uh, to start uh, as a, as a bonus. <laughs> Bribe them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. How about role specializations? All right. So, so we'll, when you take the approach of keeping specialization separate from careers, that's when they because rep- they they represent training and abilities that could apply to a wide range of characters. So, for example, uh, charlatans and carn artists uh, could come from any walk of life, really. Uh, you can have them uh, appear from anywhere. Likewise, uh, a lot of people learn forms of self-defense, even though they're not soldiers. You know, Today, you can learn martial arts uh, uh, after work, so uh, why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, so then there are settings with magic, which might include... Uh, a magic role specialization that gives characters uh, of any career access to some uh, magic-related talents. Yep. Yep. So your swordsman could know a little bit of magic to en- yeah. enhance maybe his uh, sword-fighting abilities or the rogue to, uh, to make him even more sneaky. 
Yeah, you can have a druid specialization or a mage specialization. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then, uh, but uh, role specializations are, they say, are not intended to replace the careers. You have to be careful of that. So they're just they help you know reinforce maybe the the, the type of career career or the idea that the the player has in mind for his character, like a a swindler could include talents that help a player uh, con, connive, and scheme, but they might not be focused on uh, range of skills that are, uh, that are, uh, how, do you, how do I say it? Yeah, I wouldn't, it, it, they wouldn't. Uh, Want some well, help, bud? Yeah, uh, I'm brain fart. <laughs> You're not including, uh, it's okay. You're not yeah. including the skills that go into the scoundrel career in this, and it oh. tells you you don't you don't um, you don't give any additional career skills with this one. Um, so while you have your scoundrel who has a list of skills that makes him a scoundrel, your swindler is focused more on the talents that give them the ability to connive, con, and scheme. Right. Sorry. Um... No, it's okay. We all I think, have those moments. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. A bit too much, a bit too much sake tonight. <laughs> oh no! Oh, there it is. Now you miss uh, it. I hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been hitting the sauce That's a little right. bit. That's what you and Michael are calling it these days. I had a bit of the sake. Yeah. The sake. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many specializations yeah. do you need with this method? Um, well, it suggests right here you have as many specializations as we have careers, you know. Um, so when you, um, you know, when you pick a career, you get a free specialization as well, and you got like a wide range to choose from. And that could be this. This method to me reminds me of kind of like um, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition with their backgrounds. Um, your background gives you, you know, your background kind of becomes your career. It's what you your skills, right? But where your skill set come from, but your talents really define your class, so to speak. Um, in the in the framing that I'm thinking of, or the or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Uh, but either way, the talent tree is uh, with the role specialization method. It is separate from the skills. It's not connected. All right. Excellent. Well, That's cool. Um, so I put in the show notes that we were going to go through this sidebar because I don't think this should have even been a sidebar. <laughs> it is the it is pretty important to uh-huh. people who've never used a specialization tree to understand how they work. That's right. True. That's true. And um, the sidebar is on page. What is that? One hundred four. Uh, yeah, yep. Yep. at the very top, and it it goes over that. So let's let's dig into it. Sure. So, uh, having used them from Star Wars, I kind of know intrinsically how they work. But mm-hmm. um, the you would buy it. You first get your career, mm-hmm. uh, and if you're doing, we're talking career specialization method, not the role specialization method. Here, you get your career. Then you get access to the three specialization trees, let's say three, uh, in that career. You get one of them for free. Yep. And then you can then spend your XP to purchase talents in that tree starting on the top row with the tier one talents. Yep. You mm-hmm. must have at least one tier one talent. To progress down the tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So picture a grid. Yeah. Like we said before, you have yeah. four columns, five rows, and the five rows re- representing the five tiers of talents. In mm-hmm. order to get all the way down to that nice dedication talent, you have to start from the top. Uh, and the costs of those is based on where they sit in the tree, not where they sit in the book. Exactly. Um, so yeah. if it's um, if GM's building a tree, it, there's some notes later on to tell you how to do that, and sometimes they're going to be in a different spot on your tree mm-hmm. than they are in the book, and it's key to remember that the where they sit on the tree, top row is five, 
second row is tier two, that's 10, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth, all the way down to tier five. Yep. Now, I had said at the start um, that you get access to one of your specializations for free. All of the specializations are open to all characters. It's just that um, you get access to one for free. If you want to buy into another specialization tree, you have to spend XP to do so. And you have to buy access to the tree. Mm -hmm. And that is done at a cost of 10 times the total number of specializations the character will have after making the purchase. So let's say, um, Stefan, you brought up your bounty hunter. She's a skip tracer. There are five other specializations in that tree. If she wanted to buy one in a second one in that and say become a um, martial artist, which is another one of them, uh, she would then spend 20 XP because she her target is to have a second specialization right. uh, to buy that access to that second tree. And then she'd have to spend the XP above and beyond for talents in yeah. all of her trees. That's it. So the 20 XP only gets her access to that martial artist tree. And that's inside career. Now, if you want to right. purchase one that is outside your career, it's the same cost plus 10. So if the, instead of saying that character, you now you had with her, you had martial artist and you had skip tracer, but you wanted mm-hmm. to also pick up ranks in Marauder, or uh, to, sorry, not ranks, but the talent tree for marauder um and these are just all ones that are listed in star wars right Uh, that's a third one so it would cost 30 but it's outside of your career so it's an additional 10 so just buying into that tree would be then 40 xp to gain that access yep that's it that's it like i had a character who was a squadron leader in star wars uh and he i bought him access to the infiltrator uh, specialization was just totally outside of his career. So brand, so he had to pay that extra 10, 10 points. So, yep. but he's got and, and, access to infiltration. Yep. <laughs> and a key final note: uh, the last two paragraphs here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, ranked talents may be purchased additional times as they become available on trees. Yeah, that have them listed multiple times. So if a player, if the player already has a ranked talent from another tree, they still purchase it again, and it adds to the total number of ranks. And there's no limit. Right. Uh, the, the only limit is the ones that to the they're limited to the trees that they have. Yep. That's, that's the it. limit. Yeah. Fact, so look, for example, uh, Chris gave an uh, example of of grit in one tree. If he if uh, I buy another talent, uh, another tree, and it has grit as well, I can buy that talent of grit for five XP as well. Yeah, if that's where it's at, exactly. Yeah, that's it, and I gain another rank of that grit. It, then, it doesn't it doesn't cost you extra extra because it's a second rank because you already spent right. twenty or more XP getting access to the tree. Well, what if we run into a talent that I have on one tree? that's not ranked and I have it into another tree and there's a talent I need to go behind it. Do I have to buy that again? Nope. You just mark it as purchased and move on without spending, without uh, spending any XP because you already have it. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's for non ranked talents only. That's it. Correct. Yep. Yep. Excellent. All right. (sighs) Oh, well then now that that's out of the way, (laughs) How, yeah. do we, how do we make these things? What are the steps? How do we go about doing it? Okay. Well, first off, you take a seed, and then you take a whole no, ground. No, wrong kind of tree. Wrong oh, kind of sorry. Tree. Damn Canadians <laughs> always trying to plant more maples. That's right. <laughs> They're the most important trees ever. <laughs> uh, no, the process of creating the talent tree typically starts with a concept. You have to have a concept or three or four of them Mm -hmm. for your career. Yes. Themes that you wish to incorporate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next step is to select. I'll I'll take it. Next step is to take two to four talents 
that are the meat and potatoes of that tree. And those are going to be what makes this tree this tree. Um, tier one talents um, would be you, you would then arrange those talents in the tree somewhere, placing them tier one through five where they normally would go. Yep. And then well, may I interject for a second? Yep. Go right ahead. Um, as as you're creating the trees, you might need a the, the, a sheet of paper. You can also download uh, the uh, the official tree from the Fantasy Flight Games uh, link. They actually mention it at page 104. Creating a yep. tree, they give you the link, That's right. so I can help you out with uh, mapping out the the actual tree. That's right. And then a um and then a, a fan request, uh, Drainsmith, if you're listening to this, can you make a yeah. fillable one? <laughs> form fillable one <laughs> didn't see that in the while well, you have no. a big there's a lot of stuff in that dispensary of everything genesis probably in there somewhere <laughs> i hadn't found it <laughs> anyways move on so if it's oh, not there cool. please please make one yeah. <laughs> so yeah you're you've got your meat and potatoes talents now you're going to fill in the rest of them yep and Okay. There's some kind of rules that they talk about here. Um, you know, you want your each talent must have at least one connection when you're putting in the pathways, mm-hmm. except for the top row. Um, and at the at so if you sorry at the top row, at least one talent must connect to a tier two also. There, that's what I was trying to get at. So the top row is your tier ones. And yeah. yes, they can stand alone. You can have yeah. one that just is there because that's where people will start at is at the top row. Yep. But at least one of those four must connect to tier two. Right. Or else and then. Or else if you don't do that, there's really no point in making a fucking tree, no. everybody. <laughs> you got to have at least no. one that goes down. Yeah, uh, exactly. Not so much a tree as just a book. <laughs> and they don't they don't connect to each other, the tier, the, the top row, because there's no need to. Because no. that is where people start, start at, is along exactly. the top row. Mm-hmm. So those are key rules to starting with the tree. Yeah. So what's next? Well, next you're going to want to start arranging them around, right? So at this point, you should have roughly between 14 and 16 unique talents, um, which you should probably have maybe three, you know, maybe up to three ranked talents, you know, scattered throughout the tree. So say you want to create like a melee character, right? You'll probably want to put three of the parry um, talents, rank talents in there, sort of, you know, somewhere. Um, half of the talents should be active, and some should be passive, or else you'll look like one of my character sheets that I have on frickin' Fantasy Grounds, <laughs> where I have all these talents that I could activate in combat, and that would be, you'll be kind of, your players will be a little overloaded, you know? You'll want some of those that are just automatically active, when I'd have. Um, yeah. You know, you you should have you should you should include toughened and the grit or and or the grit talents. Um, some of the socially focused trees would use grit, right? Or would use your you would use your strain to kind of activate them. So you'll want grit in there. And then the combat focused trees would have toughened to kind of improve the wounds and such. Um, and then now, quick yeah. audible. Yeah. Um, I I don't just say social. I think also because there aren't any out there that exist. Mm -hmm. Um, because this didn't exist in Star Wars, but if you're making a magic-using tree, I most assuredly would include Ranks of Grit. Oh, Oh, absolutely you would. Oh, yeah. And there are some, and, you know, there are some of the combat talents, like Parry, actually, uses Mm -hmm. your strain to activate it, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And then last but not least, certainly not least, you'll want to have dedication. If you admit it, if, if, if if you don't have a dedication talent on that tree, you should have something there that is the pinnacle of that specialization, if you will. Either it's a special talent or one that exists that is basically as useful as a dedication talent, right? Another tier five talent there. So, Zealous fire! 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Every time Ned, every time your game master uses a, uses a, um, what do you call it? Uses a story. A, jail, point, a story point. You get yeah. a, you get a, you get two strain or one strain back. Two strain. Two. Oh my God. Yeah. I cast a spell. Thank you for my strain back. Yes. DM, <laughs> GM. Yeah, because GM spends a story point to upgrade the uh, the difficulty of the, the casting of your of said spell. Exactly. <laughs> oh, right. it's okay. I get two two string back. <laughs> <laughs> so here we've kind of selected them. You know, kind of the ones that we want. Next, we got to go into arranging talent, which arranging the talents in a tree, which can become a bit of an art form, if you will. You know. Um, oh, I'm sure. I know that. I know when they talked about the creation of talent trees, the devs for Star Wars, when they were talking about it on uh, on other podcasts mm-hmm. um, or in person, they talked about that is really an art form yeah. to creating mm-hmm. these trees, mm-hmm. and it takes playtesting for it to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Creating so, yeah, pathways. Don't, don't, yeah, don't feel yourself locked in if you feel it doesn't work. Your players give you feedback it's like, ah, I don't like this tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're but they do have in the book. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. You have some uh, some examples and guidelines. Mm-hmm. So creating the pathways on page one hundred five. So once you've you know written up the talents in uh, the tree, then you need to draw the lines between them, the pathways. Right. Right. And they recommend using maybe 11 to 14 vertical cl- oh, well, uh, connections you, between you know, the let's rows. Go, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about let's talk about oh. arranging the talents. You skipped the way. Oh ahead. yes, you skipped oh, the way ahead here. So I was, I was of, testing you. So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so what we're talking about as far as arranging talents, the example they have here is maybe you want dedication to be a little more expensive or less expensive than creating a curious pathway that leads all the way through halfway down a tree um, half of the tree before you get dedication so you have to almost buy half the tree before you get dedication instead of or you can do a straight line down to it um, yeah for example the skip tracer that I've got it has one column where I, it's a straight line if I, if I really want to get dedication to just buy the, the first four talents and then cool. dedication there you go that's cool and but, also, then the, but then the other tier five talents are uh, branch out from dedication. So, <laughs> yep. It also talks about when you're putting your ranked talents in here, don't mm-hmm. put them if you can one atop the other. Right. You yeah. don't want your first rank and toughened at tier one, and then have a second rank and toughened directly below it. Yep. Um, Unless that is the design of that tree. And certainly don't do it a third time. If you do it once where you have one rank of grit and another rank of grit below it, don't put that third rank of grit directly below that. Yeah, Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Scale it off a bit. Yes. Yep, yep. yep. And then the final bit that they talk about in here, and this is very important, is the final paragraph in the arranging um, in addition, considering the placing of talents on a higher or lower row than their established tier in the book, right? Um, and that's what I wanted. What I mentioned earlier, this allows you to make unique, and this makes those for those interesting choices. You know, if a player is going down a certain part of the tree, and they're playing. They give an example here of a druid specialization. Um, where normally Animal Companion is a Tier 3 talent, but you could definitely, when building a Druid tree, put that as Tier 2, because that is a highlight of every Druid, and you want them to have it as soon as possible. Um, And so you'd want that in that second tier, as opposed to Tier 3, how it is shows up in the book. And likewise, talents that you want them to spend more XP to get to that you think maybe, you know, I, a good example would be the good cop, bad cop talents from uh, Shadow of the Beanstalk. Uh, mm-hmm. And the ranks of that, uh, you may want to have those uh, instead of starting at tier two, you know, you want to emphasize the good cop side of it. Um, right. Instead of putting it in tier two where it normally would start, maybe you started at tier three, one a little higher 
because you want it to take a little more XP to get to. It takes more practice to get to that right. uh, level. Mm-hmm. But it usually don't go more than one tier off. Right. Don't right. put Animal Companion at tier one because that throws off balance in the game. Yeah, or dedication at tier tier three. (laughs) Exactly. Unless, if you're putting dedication at tier three, but you've got this, I've seen a talent tree in Star Wars that has it. You literally have to spiral all the way down to the bottom row and spiral back up to get to it. And you end up spending like, 400 XP to get to it. <laughs> that's it. So, exactly. so that even if mean. dedication itself, no, that's it. even if dedication only costs you 15, you have to spend all that XP to get to it exactly. anyway. Yes. Exactly. You're not yeah. making it cheaper. You're just making it more difficult. Right. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's be... one in the Force and Destiny line that does that. I just look at it and I'm like, this is a spiral of death. I hate this tree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. All yeah, right. They... Now, on to your pathways that you like you go, to talk me. about stuff. There we go. Right. 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 So excited that. about that. It's about talking. About I, it. I know. It. I'm going on the path <laughs> now. So. All right. So. As I was saying, they, they, they have some guidelines on creating a pathway, pathways uh, that is supposed to be an art, like Tony mentioned. They su- suggest maybe between 11 to 14 vertical connections, those are the up and down ones, uh, between the rows, and about 6 to 10 uh, between the columns. So, you, of course, okay. using more connections diminishes, I say, the effectiveness of the pathway if, you can get anywhere from anywhere instead of just don't make it uh, a uniform grid, right? Basically, exactly. so uh, yeah. but you don't want uh, too uh, too few either. So, like I say, like using more connection diminishes the effectiveness of pathways, while using too few make makes it too limiting for the players. Right. So, give them a, still a few options. You know, uh, like like a branch of a tree. Sometimes they branch out in two or three directions. Right. Gives him some choice. So, and then they say, however, some specializations specializations may feel more unique because of their limited or more open pathways. So, to, like the spiral to account, yeah, something like the spiral of death. Spiral. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like if you have like a, a psionic specialization tree, yeah. do that with yeah. that spiral in there just to fuck with them. Yeah, you pick <laughs> yeah. the psionic. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> if they can manage to get all the way through it, then they deserve it. So. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, taking the focus of you know whatever the career specialization is, like a example of the animal companion, you know, yep. gaining access to something that would be iconic for that, you know, the animal companion for the druid, yep. makes sense to have it cost a little less and be accessible. But having a combat talent might not be the focus. So you could, like you could get some, but might might cost more. Yeah, true. So now, yeah. don't, this this next point that they make is interesting because you brought up the good cop, bad cop, and I think I've seen this in another way where they're talking about creating lesser connections between the columns so that like one half of the talent tree is kind of themed one way and the other half of the, the talent tree is kind of themed the other. So you can have one side of the talent tree be all of like the good cop talents, right? That kind of enhance that yep. ability. And on the other half you'll have like the bad cop, right? So that's kind of what fact, they go to. The the marshal in Star Wars that's does that. Is. That's what it is. Yeah, I know I saw it. Yes. I know I saw it in there. Yeah. The marshal tree does have that's that. Cool. There's only like one or two connections that bring the tree together mm-hmm. in the five rows uh, in the middle. Yeah. Where you could cross from one side to the other. But if you start on one side of the tree, you pretty much kind of have to go following the, the pathways through that whole yeah. side of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. So or you're start. a good cop or a bad cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. But at so, the end of the day, you're still a cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's yeah. Talk unless about, you bounce and, from one side to the next, good cop, bad cop, bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, and there's a spot. There's a spot where you can do. If you're aiming specifically for that, there's a spot yep. where you can do that. <laughs> yes, yeah. you can. There's also another concept to create these things called dead ends. Mm-hmm. You know, in the tree. Where they're, you know, you don't want to, again, if that, that grit talent that I talked to you about, right, that's not connected to anything, well, technically that would be a dead end because <laughs> really not connected to the end of it. But maybe you have that, um, I don't know, like maybe an improved parry that ends a pathway on like tier four, 
like the, that fourth row that you can't go below it. Yeah. You can't go to the right or left of it. It just ends, you know, yeah, it's a pathway. I'm, I'm looking at the skip tracer now and just okay. like if you've got on the right side, left side, mm-hmm. it ends at, at tier four yeah. bypass security and good doesn't go anywhere. You have right. to go back up and around. Right. So you really kind of kind of got to commit to, well, if I do take the talent, you know, do I really want it? I don't have many options after that. I'll have to go somewhere else in the tree. So that again, more options That's for it. your players, more Which interesting means, options for this. Choices. Choices. Which means you have to go through those tiles to get the one that's at the dead end. Right. Right. And and the key is that you never have more than three. And uh, typically a tree will have one or two. Right. Um, mm-hmm. In the rest of the tree, not including the top row. Right. Right. Yep. right. Okay. So we get the, get uh, the next part here where they talk about the XP tax. Mm-hmm. So players often regard purchasing lesser talents that they may not necessarily want as a tax on acquiring those better talents. Right. And you can reduce this feeling Max, by oh, av- oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You can reduce this feeling by avoiding putting talents that are not relevant to the tree mm-hmm. in. Uh, and by including useful or interesting talents, uh, providing Multiple paths through the tree also gives players a chance to pick more desirable talents along the way. Yeah. So while it tells you on one hand to limiting is fun, limiting also can hurt you by creating XP taxes to get to the talents that they really want. Mm-hmm. So have those pathways, you know, when you're doing this and you're building three careers, maybe you've got one in there that is like, one career specialization, excuse me, three specializations for a career. Um, you have one specialization in there that's really kind of unique and it's got the separate branches and it's got the dead ends. And right. The other ones yep. are pretty cut dry, pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Um, the pathways in them are sprinkled with talents that are very appropriate to that specialization and are there's multiple different ways through the tree that make unique characters. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then the last one, Chris. Yeah. Um, the, po- the powerful trees, you know, like you just gotta be aware of what talents you actually provide in the tree itself. Like putting all the best talents, like what are they? Lucky strike. Everybody's name. <laughs> everybody's going through the same time I am. Right. Um, lucky yeah. strike, <laughs> knack for it, natural, right? All these things, putting all those those powerful talents yeah. in there. Two yeah. or three dedication talents, no, one. Yeah, it's like a win, wind, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, uh, you probably should know. She probably shouldn't include. I'm now. I mentioned the tier four, tier five talents. Probably shouldn't include any more than like three tier four talents, and probably no more than like two tier five talents in the tree. You know, so. Um, yeah, because it's going to cost them. Think about it. Is it's going to cost them less XP to build up this, to have five, um, like you know, row f- or four row five talents. It's going to be, you know, less XP to get all those than you would in the pyramid. You know, cause and you what that what that lower, just what that lower. means is have some ranked talents sprinkled into those tiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Lower or improved level. versions of yeah. some talents. Parry, okay. improve parry. Yeah. So we've so we picked our talents. We've arranged them. We've connected them. We've made sure we're not taxing the players too much and they're not too powerful. How do we go about testing these trees? How do we do that? That you, to, uh, Tony, or uh, I, whomever. Who I don't care. This one. <clears throat> How do well, we suggest we, doing it? Well, they suggest once you're satisfied, you give tree to several players then tell them to build characters uh build a character kind of you give them 50 to 100 xp to spend and if everyone made the same choices reconsider changing your path consider changing your pathways or rearranging the talents Mm -hmm. but if you get a bunch of unique characters then you've got yourself a good tree i think so so, I mean, you can even ask them, you know, like, um, well, why did you pick this? 
you know why did you yeah. go, why did you go this way and you yeah. know just start to have a dialogue with them yeah yeah and try and understand what they're thinking about that's it now they've given us on page 106 they've actually given us a sample tree yeah we yes. don't have to go over the whole thing but nope. they did a they did a solid job here it tells it shows you those pathways mm-hmm. it shows you what those tiers and those rows and columns look like and it shows you, you know, where the ranks of ranked talents sit. Right. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. Pretty cool though. Like, I like yeah, that part dare, in the middle. Daredevil pilot. Yeah. I, I like I like that those four talents in the middle of the tree on row one and two, how they kind of connect in the U shape, not connect to anything else, but they're there. And they had an explanation for it down in the. Um, does they have a description of how they kind of. Um, did this and what they say about that isolated middle section. So if you guys are following along, I'm talking about the grit. Then you go down, it connects to rapid reaction. You go to the right, which is sidestep, and you go up, back up to row one. Uh, you have a jump up. Um, yeah. So we pretty much all know what those what those are, um, and they describe it as they isolated that middle section because daredevil pilots tend to be dodgy and fast. And another thing that I noticed in this tree myself is that it didn't they didn't put toughened in the tree. They put grit, and there's really only the one talent that is powered by strain. But the reason why grit is in here is because the vehicle rules themselves. When vehicles take system strain, the pilot takes strain as well when attempting all kinds of different maneuvers and whatnot. And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so having that grit piled into there helps uh, that daredevil pilot. And, you know, he's. You know, he's got that higher strain threshold because he's used to spending strain for extraordinary uh, feats of piloting. Right. Yep. Said, and extra maneuvers. So, you know, if he wants to aim again. You know. Exactly. That's right. And, at the, and you'll see at the top the, the, the specialization, the additional career skills. You know, if, if you look at your pilot in – the core rule book, it's got a list of skills, and then you've got these four additionally. You've got cool, coordination, gunnery, and piloting. And I think piloting and coordination are n- normally in the pilot. Yeah. Maybe it's piloting and gunnery, but the other two are new and added to that. So they right. followed their own rules there, too. So Yes, they did. But it's uh-huh. a great that's a great specialization tree. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And again, yeah, well, I mean, um, what I have, I have just one more thing to say as we're, oh, and, and as I'm looking at this on the right, on, on the far left hand side, it's like row one, row two, row three. So when you are starting, when you are doing, um, when you are going to be working with specialization trees, think of those as like, you know, this talent is a row three talent, which costs 15 XP. Instead of a tier three talent, because like we said, you can move those around. Um, so if you are working with specialization trees, just get in your mind of it's row three instead of tier. Then you won't be mixed right. up with the cost on things. You know what I mean? So Yeah, a good way of thinking of it. I was just thinking about that. Like I see grit at the very bottom worth 25 XP. However, it's only, you know, it'll be my third strain that I'll be adding to it right but yeah it's only a third rank of grit man that should only cost 15 it should it should it, but i could go down this path right here and it's gonna be less <laughs> so yeah all right so we've got a little exercise that we're gonna put ourselves through now we i'll tell <laughs> you we as i'll speak for the three of us we have no intention of doing um talent specialization trees for our Tales of the Epsilon Eclipse setting. However, we decided we would do a what if moment mm-hmm. uh, and kind of theory craft a for a single career three specialization trees. Mm-hmm. Can anybody now, guess used, what career that would be? Anybody? Yeah. Bueller? 
Bueller. Ah, too late. <laughs> uh, there's there's no classroom, Chris. Um, I know. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're doing lumberjack. That's right. Voodoo <laughs> lumberjacks. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and yep. uh, we're and we're okay. Yes, we, we took are. with what Chris when he wrote this uh, <laughs> special is or this uh, career for us. He had the the oath. Of the Sequoia, yeah. was it? The Oath of the Sequoia? Oh, yes, <laughs> it is. Like and it. by the way, just to re- reiterate everybody, um, to be a lumberjack is to take the Oath of the Sequoia. They stand yes. beside – if they stand behind you, protect them. If they stand beside you, respect them. If they stand against you, defeat them. To be a lumberjack is to be an order of the axe and saw Templar. To be a lumberjack is to have mind, body, and spirit as strong as the tallest Sequoia, a.k.a. the Redwood. To be a lumberjack is to wear the flannel vestments with honor and pride. Okay, that's a lumberjack. <laughs> there we go. So I then Very took nice. that oh, and did. went, all right, we're going to theory craft three specialization trees, and we're going to call them first the Order of the Axe. That one is going to be, you know, think of axes are for chopping. So this is a melee focused tree for chopping down those opponents that are um, needing Standing to be defeated. in front of you. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, the, the second one is the order of the saw. Huh. And uh, that let saw me is... Let me guess. Let me guess. Since you, are, you, you and I are brothers, and I, we speak alike, when you were thinking order the saw, you went with psionics. Well, they do use saws to cut heads open. So you're thinking psionics, <laughs> right? Right, hey, the bone saw no. cutting open your head. I told you, you my brother, brother. It's a precision tool. The it's saw is telling. a precision tool in the hands of the lumberjack who is trying to cut down a tree. He uses a saw for precision, and he uses an axe for power. Yeah. So yeah. when you're thinking, Chris saw that coming. Precision tools. You're thinking the psionics. Yes. And then the last one, of course, is the order of flannel. <laughs> And that is that standing bis- in front of people and protecting them. And so do you want the order, you know, the order wears the flannel vestments. That's their protection. Yes. So the order of the flannel, <laughs> it's protection focused. And of course we would put talents in there. like And keeps you warm and looks nice. Right. And so it's what talents, what four <laughs> talents do you guys think we should focus on in each of those trees? Well, Stefan, do you want? You know what? I, you know, I'll take I'll take what? the order of the axe. I'll take the melee one. Okay, right. we, we, we'll all we'll all think. So let's, when yeah, I think, let's, we'll, we'll all just get, let's round robin it. Let's see. I'm thinking Perry. Perry. Okay. Um, um, these guys are frontline fighters. They probably need some ranks and toughen. Oh, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. They'll have they'll have some ranks and toughens for sure. Um, I don't yeah. know if there's anything like. Sp- one of any of our special oh you know what crushing blow could be a good one the tier 5 talent from realms of Tiernoth could be berserker um, berserker yeah, oh yeah berserker could be good too but maybe yes. a tier 5 talent one that really kind of encapsulates the melee combatant but you want to get and it doesn't have to. You don't have to say, oh, it's a special talent. Mm-hmm. You can say that that encapsulation is making sure that you have that maximum rank in brawn. That's true. Dedication. That's right. Dedication. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's see. What well, else it? And if you use the act, mm-hmm. if you use the act, you have the martial weapons master. Oh, it's yeah. true. On their axe. That's true. That's actually pretty nice. I like that. Yeah. You know, you could, you know what? You could have, and I'm just looking at this right now. There's the improved parry. That could be like yeah. one of those dead end talents, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Like so for That's order of the saw, you guys got any ideas? Well, there's always uh, mind over matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. A yeah. couple ranks of that, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, that allows you to use your psionic abilities on others that mm-hmm. normally you can only target yourself with, right? Yep. And so that. Templar want to be able to put up a barrier and protect multiple people. They they need to they need to have that ability. Yep. That's it. 
Yep. Um, and but grit as well, because you know, increase the strain from using those psionic powers one, once or twice. Signature Other. spell. Mm-hmm. That would be a good one. That's true. And it fits to that. have a. It fits, in my opinion, that pinnacle tier five ta- talent, zealous fire, so fits. Yes, it does. A, for for the order, yes. An <laughs> order of mentalists mm-hmm. or uh, mental powerhouses that these guys are. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that does. Yep. Let's see. Now, I have a talent in mind for the uh, Order of the Flannel, but I had kind of a thought here, yeah. is that these this class is also a leadership class. It could be, yeah. And so what it we is. could do with the t- with the if we were to build the third the third order, the Order of the Flannel, yep. we could do one of those split trees where on one side of the tree it focuses on leadership, yes, and on the other side of the tree it focuses on bodyguarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the bodyguard talent itself. <laughs> bodyguard and yep. improved and supreme bodyguard from Star Wars. You could borrow those. Um, while they don't exist in Genesis, they do exist in Star Wars, and they are good. Um, and you could bring them over. Yeah, absolutely. There, oh, it, sorry. Go ahead. There was one oh. thing that I was thinking about to link all of them together. That every one of these trees should have in common. I think I know and where you're going. What, what am I thinking of, Stefan? I think it's uh, reskinning the justice of the Citadel. No. No? It oh, is. because uh, it is part of the list that you mentioned. Like We could rename it the justice of the axe and saw. <laughs> what, okay, refresh me then. What is that? Well, actually, let me explain what I was thinking. Then we'll, then we'll right. see what you... So what I was thinking... So I, when I was getting out of the car today, I was thinking about this, and I'm like, because I was thinking about the Legend of the Five Rings, the sa- that competition that made them samurai, oh. okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, what if our lumberjacks, they go to the competition, they become lumberjacks, you know, like they have to, kind of in that same vein. Then I started thinking, well, all of them should have a talent in this tree that is... They're competitors, baby. They're lumberjack competitors. So it's something like natural athlete, where they can re-roll the athletics check during the competitions, or yeah, or, or coordination, something. yeah, or or coordination becomes yeah, a career the rolling skill logs. For them. Because right now, for career skills, we have athletics, leadership. So Tony, leadership is a is you know we did say that they were leaders. So athletics, leadership, knowledge, metaphysics, melee, heavy. Mental discipline, psionics, resistance, and survival. So, I don't know. It was just a thought. It kind of yeah, like, could be. <laughs> you know, that's, something like that. that's neat. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, because there are some talents that allow you to you know, add a few more, one or two or two more skills as part of the career. Yep. So, yeah, the, uh, the lumberjack competitor or competitions. Mm-hmm. Could add coordination and something well, else. Uh, well, then why don't we just give coordination to the lumberjacks? Now that I think about <laughs> it, that just but but re-rolling that athletics, making them what is it? I think it's the natural yeah. talent spend, allows you to spend, spend a yeah. story point. You have to re-roll uh, one of the two, something like that. Once a session or something like that, you get to re-roll or something. Yeah, you could yeah. you could reskin, and this is Absolutely. welcoming the making of talents. You could reskin natural to just be natural competitor yes and right. because because natural is it normally i uh, believe a tier four talent mm-hmm. um well, three actually it's, it's tier okay. three normally okay well you could make this tier two mm-hmm. in the lumberjack trees and all of them have it and maybe one of like the in in the uh, leadership protection spec it's a dead end for sure in that one yeah. Um, yeah. because it's it's common for all lumberjacks to have this, but it's not something that the leadership protector, the order, the flannel normally mm-hmm. focuses on. Right. No. So it's definitely one of your dead ends, and t- and and you can put it on row two of the tree, because normally natural lets you choose two skills, but in this case, we're saying it's specifically these two skills: natural, right. ath- natural competitor, and it's athletics. And coordination checks. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can yeah. you can re-roll one per session, right? 
Is yeah. that how that works? That's it. Yeah. 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 Cool. I like that, Chris. Right. That's a great thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And of course, they would all have dedication. And I think that <laughs> the so. melee focused one, the order of the axe, would have the easiest path to it. Maybe like right on the there left side or the middle mm -hmm. left side gotta, of the tree you go down is a one. path straight down, straight down or just with one jog halfway, cool. you know, lo early on. Like it goes, goes from row one down to row two, then over to row two in the next column and then straight down. Gotcha. It It's still almost a straight shot. Right. The earlier that jog over. So. Cool. So, Stephen, yeah. what you were talking about, you said something about, what was it, the, well, the, the axe the that you saw? What was it? Called? That's it, just reskinning the Justice of the Citadel, which... Uh, Terranoth, right? From Terranoth, which allows you once per round, suffer three strain to add damage equal to your ranks in discipline to one hit oh, on a successful yeah. melee attack. Oh, I like that. Or, or it could be a, a psionic attack for the mm -hmm. Order of the Saw. Or Cool. I do like bringing the what the mental discipline into it for these guys. Yeah, that is yeah. a that is one of their pinnacle, not pinnacle skills, but it's one of their main skills, right? Well, that's it. And cool. It's particularly important for someone maybe of the order of the saw, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you but know, it, and another way we could highlight the the athletic or competitive side to it is mm -hmm. we don't even have to put natural. We could just put you know a cup. The, a, a rank or two of knack for it in the tree, and those players would then choose what what they have a knack for, right? Um, oh, yeah. As their individual lumberjack, where they are uh, more competitive than others, there so to speak, yep. Yep. and um, where their areas of focus are, right? Yeah, that makes some sense too. Yeah. Cool. All right. Very well. Nice. Great job, guys. I mean, we struggled with so. it a little bit because this is alien. We, we don't normally no. think in the terms of specialization trees when we think Genesis. We think no. the pyramid, exactly. well, which I personally it. still like more for almost every setting. Mm -hmm. Me too. But for it took it taking back to my old original thought process when I was first looking at Genesis. When Chris and I first started the show and I was talking about starting that Hellgate London game that my players were all like, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> I, If I were to have done that, I would have def – and I talked about it then. I probably would have done specialization trees instead of pyramids for that mm -hmm. because each career in that has the ability to specialize – and these specialization trees, and I want people to be able to get to those higher ranking mm -hmm. talents faster in that game gotcha. because they're big damn heroes. Right. So, so you'd have picked. So, so then in that you would have picked the specialization trees linked to careers. You wouldn't have done just roles. I would have done separate roles. I would have done them just like they are in the video game. I would have done two per career. Okay. Um, cool. Cool. And there were good, but there's a total of three careers. There's a total of. Um, uh, two to three specialization trees per career for a total of you know not very many, but mm -hmm. um, too bad, yeah. But still, it would have been for a one shot, so I didn't want to put a lot of tremendous amount of work into it. Uh, but I All think, right. and 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 I've seen this on the internet. I've seen examples of this from other GMs out there. Mm -hmm. If you're going to run a supers game, oh, and you want to build specific types of supers. Building the trees ahead of time would really – you could incorporate um, powers into mm -hmm. their trees and have their power upgrades, so to speak, buildable, purchased right in there as talents. Right. And they'd be themed based on, you know – Well, yeah, because you have – your superheroes usually have almost like their little niche. You have the speedster, the, the marksman, the strong man. Mm -hmm. The yeah. blaster. <laughs> The techie, yeah. <laughs> the mentalist, you know. Those and yeah. with those, you have a career that is separate, and you have the role-based ah, specialization mm -hmm. trees, you know, mm -hmm. um, where you could totally do those for a supers game, and that would work really well because right. then those powers would be 
again, themed by the character's theme. You know, yeah. Spider-Man is is an agile. I use an yeah. example here. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man is an agile guy, right? But so is Daredevil. They're both very agile characters who mm-hmm. use the same um, talent yeah. set. Yeah, but in different ways. speed and agility. There you yeah. go. Yep. Yeah. But in Compared different ways. The whole yep. Yes. Or the yeah, thing. Which Hulk, but you, know thing. you would have you would have a gadgeteer too, right? Oh, and yeah. I, I could see yeah. Spider Man having both of those specializations. Your yeah. agile mm-hmm. specialization and your gadgeteer. Well, yeah, sure. Sometimes yeah. some of these guys have some, some trinkets that it's not the major thing like Iron Man, but yeah, he's got these web shooters. Yep. Daredevil has his stick, his night stick. Uh, a few little tools. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Those that 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 cool. really kind of came to mind for me mm-hmm. as a way to use those role specialization mm-hmm. trees. I would is the, go. probably the best, in my opinion, the best use of them. For Here that. you go. Here's a thought. If you were going to do a um, a fantasy game, I would I would probably go with roles instead of careers and specializations for each role for specializations for each career. I'd probably do roles, which would set set you up like you know the D shift seven D classes, right? Where you can multi class, so to speak, pick up a you know a specialization in fighter and wizard <laughs> if you want, right? You know, All right? Um, yeah, that could be a thought. That could be one way yeah. of doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what other what other um. Yeah, you'd have to just. I don't see any. I, I I mean, again, I prefer the pyramid. Mm-hmm. method myself for Genesis. Yeah. Uh, but again, it, it does. I, I do have my complaints with it. And that is it that I do see my players taking the same 15 yeah. talents over and over yeah. and over. <laughs> exactly. So if I really wanted to get myself out of that rut of seeing that I would sit down and do specialization trees. For my right. Characters, my yep. players. If but. we were to do, here's a question for you. If we were to do specialization trees, I know we're not going to, but if we were, for Tales of the Epsilon Eclipse, would we have them linked to careers, or would it be more role based? Oh, they'd be career linked. You'd have to, we'd they'd have two to or be. three per. Well, just our yeah. thought here with the lumberjack, right? <laughs> we yeah. have to do the order of the axe and the saw and flannel, right? <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> well, that's the so, indicator right there of why I don't want to do it. <laughs> because <laughs> there's a couple of those. To. There's a couple of those careers that would be really difficult to come up with a second or even a third yeah. specialization tree for. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I mean, and I'm looking at the Boggler. I wouldn't be able to begin to that career, just be able to do more than one tree for. So. Oh, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we, yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, have we, so, have we chopped down this O specialization tree? I believe we have sawed it into bits. No. Yes. It's now two picks. <laughs> So that's uh, wrapped up our main segment. And now we're on to the next one, Advantageous Threats. Uh, our favorite one where we build, roll, and narrate the die results on some sample skill checks for your entertainment. And ours, of course. Today, Tony is going to run me and Chris, or Chris and me, through a brief encounter in the Android setting. He supplied us with a selection of pre-gens. And uh, we've selected characters, Chris and I. So, Tony, what do we have to do? So, back uh, <laughs> in um, 2018. A couple of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. Uh, I created a adventure for um, Con and the Cobb for our group uh, to play. I wrote um, one called The Chrysalis Crisis. And I created some pregens for it, and they ended up being a mercenary unit called Hector's Hellhounds. So, uh, our setup here is a pair of the members of Hector's Hellhounds are separated from the rest of the mercenary unit 
following a strike on a Yakuza drug house. Now being chased by drones, the pair must attempt to flee from, hack, or shoot down the drones before they are recognized or captured. And so, um, who, which two members are of the crew did you guys decide to pick? Well, I actually picked Colonel Hector Boss Trang, the leader of Hector's Hellhounds. Um, okay. He is a um, natural human. His career is a leader. Duh. He's a leader of them. Um, yeah, so he specializes in leadership. Um, pretty decent with his pistol. He's actually the one that did I, I'm the one that set off the EMP bomb that we just hit the Yakuza house with. <laughs> um, he has uh, got multiple talents, but you know some of his motivations are, um, you know, expertise is his desire, tactical prodigy is his strength. Um, though uh, he feels losing, failing his team, uh, the fact that he got separated probably going to be stressing him out a bit right now. Um, and he, his major flaw is his pride, baby. <laughs> um, and then because this isn't an android, um, the the uh, Shadow of the Beanstalk setting, his favor is a major favor that he has. The has byroid. Um, that's what I'm playing. Yes. That's nice. Hunter. Boss. Stefan. Yes. I will be playing Raj Dish Desai. He is a uh, a clone, a uh, clone runner. So he's into hacking uh, stuff, and uh, used to be, of course, a Jinteki clone. But he was actually let go uh, because of a, a sordid past. But either way, he's joined uh, the Hellhounds. He's a pretty good hacker, uh, a little bit of combat skill because you know. He's hanging out with mercenaries, and uh, his his desires, his motivations are uh, desire of knowledge, strength is curious curiosity, mm-hmm. he fears change, and his flaw is ignorance. So maybe he's not too familiar about the, the wide wide world being a bit sheltered before, and he owes a uh, regular level favor to Genteki still. Well, hopefully, hopefully uh, curiosity won't kill the clone today. Hopefully not. All right. Take it away there. Well, <laughs> yeah, so the, the two of you have entered this back alley. Okay. And um, you're, you're escaping the um, Yakuza drug house where there was this big explosion. EMP bomb went off. A um, bunch of... Uh, Yakuza cyborgs all just got freaking shut down, um, and the the drugs were blown up in the regular explosion. And now you guys are getting away. However, this was not a sanctioned military action. Uh, this was an independent contract that the Hector's um, Hellhounds had taken, uh, and so therefore they were ordered beforehand that they had to avoid all news and police drones and mm-hmm. not get caught, not be seen leaving the scene. Mm-hmm. However, as soon as you two get cut off from the rest of the unit and they are making their way underground through the tunnels to the rendezvous point, you two step out into this back alley and you hear the whine of drones overhead. <laughs> And they begin flitting down between the buildings, and you can see the lights on them. They haven't caught you on camera yet, but they're close. Mm. In the groups, there are two minion groups of combat drones and one minion group of camera drones. And they all okay. look the same. You can't really tell from here okay. what um, what they look like. Okay. Now... Um, having know where they're coming from they're coming from From above above. and behind you okay Uh, and you guys are headed west towards your rendezvous point so they are coming from the east they have the um, they have the morning sun 
coming up behind them a little bit. Okay. And but it is still uh, nighttime, early morning, like six ish. You know. Right. Um, um, so it's still dark, but there's that fade, you know, that fading in of the sunlight coming in. Gotcha. So I'm looking on my character sheet here as to the things that I may have gear wise. And I'm telling you, buddy, these monofilament grenades are really catching my eye here <laughs> where they can be set. Now, there's a special property here where they can be set to detonate on contact or timed to to go off up to three rounds after activated as an incidental. Would these be um, okay? Well, so let's I'm, first start with an initiative roll. Right. Oh, that'll probably work good. Yeah. Yep. Vigilance. I'm, I'm going right? to go ahead and do the uh, let you guys roll, but I'm only going to roll once for the drones because even though they're three mini groups, they're traveling in a herd all mixed together. Right. So I'm only rolling one initiative. Gosh, for the I'm group. wondering, would I want to <laughs> cool on this? Because I'm thinking of doing an ambush. Would that be okay? Potentially? Or would it be more, vi- or do you just want a straight vigilance roll there, Tony? Um, for dish, it doesn't matter. It's the same dice anyway. It's vigilance. Oh. <laughs> it is vigilance. It's vigilance. Okay, okay sounds good. All righty. I managed to get... What'd you get? To? I got I got a success and three advantage. Cool. Okay, one point oh three. Holy buckets of awesomes! I have so I have three greens. Um, I have um four successes. I am going to activate a talent for one strain, which will give me. Tell me what it is. What is it? What is it? Uh, hold it steady. Rapid reaction. <laughs> Suffer one uh-huh. strain to add a. Um, an advantage. So four point one. So f- four, four success, successes, one advantage. One advantage. Yeah. And then Stefan uh, Dish had point. one success, three advantage, and the drones had one success, two advantage. So you guys will be going before them. So right. it's two player slots. Then GM. Yep. Player, player, GM. All right. Okay. Roll away. You want to, you want to go first there? Uh, Lee? Fearless leader. <laughs> well, if I can, I if I could do a um. So you the can set tactical, it up, and I can maybe lure one into the trap. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. I, they're coming from a, one or two two directions, Tony. All together in a herd. Right. Okay. I am going to set. Um, one of these grenades. So we're, you said we're in an alley, right? Mm-hmm. Um, You're trying to get away. Yes, I know. Yeah. Um, I basically I want to set a grenade between us and them in the path that will go off next round. One round later. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to move away in All the right. direction we need to go. Okay, and, so you're headed um, west. Headed west. So, is there a check to set the grenade, or is that kind of a is that or is that basically just a? Would that be- uh, go ahead and set it now? Um, see if you set it where it's going to be close to any of them. So it's check now, and that is going to be a mechanics check. Gotcha. To set the grenade. Okay. Because you're setting it. it normally, you're you used set the detonate. Could right. I- normally, you're using them. At, normally, you use them as a range light weapon. Mm-hmm. And you're using range light, but in this case, you're not lobbing one. You're could setting it as my, an explosive. Could I use my ranks in range light and my intelligence instead of agility in this case? Because mechanics is based on. I have no ranks in mechanics, and I have I'm, two intelligence. I understand. You're trying. You're trying to do something outside of your wheelbox, though. And it's mechanics I set to, it set to be explosive. It could be set to detonate. Up to three rounds later. Oh, yeah. Okay. So mechanics. Sure. All right. So that. what's the difficulty? Um, it is going to be average. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a... Um, actually, I'm going to use my out-of-turn incidental to take your story point away. Ready for <laughs> anything. 
<laughs> Got it. <laughs> and then, then you're going to spend it. I'm, well, I'm going to spend the one we already have. Mm-hmm. Oh, we have two, so. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got it. I don't think I have anything else. So that's one yellow, one green, two purple. And uh, because good. we're dealing with not just range increments as how far away they are, but you're also trying to deal with elevation here, yeah. trying to set this to where it's going to hit them coming down, throw a setback die on. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All righty. All right. Here we go. And since you can't tell which group is which, which one are you aiming at? One, two, or three? Um, I'm just putting it in a path where they have to come down. So I don't know which I got one. That. I don't know which one. Um, First one, random, yeah. Just whatever random. It is. Yeah. Whichever. <laughs> okay. Roll, I'll roll a random die. Go ahead. Okay. I have a one success, one triumph, and two threat. Mm. Woohoo. Okay. It takes you a few seconds longer. You're not the uh, explosive expert. While you are the the team um, lead and you're used to overseeing everything that's done, in this case, um, you kind of leave yourself open as you're running away. Okay. So I'm going to give um, um, the next two units that uh, attempt to do anything at you a single boost die. With your threat. Success means you set the explosive and it's going to do how much damage to the first unit that passes? What's that? Success. You set the explosive and it's, oh. how much damage is it going to do to that first group? Um, that when first they pass? group, it's going to do um, damage four. So it's going to be five because I got one success. Okay, five. And I'm going to, and I'm going to um, use the triumph to activate the blast seven quality which will be blast eight right because of my okay. one success so all right vicious so two, that will way, take too, out if that helps most likely take out one of the units we'll see all right <laughs> excellent and then i'll use a maneuver to get out of the way and i'm going to spend two strain to do another maneuver which is coordinated assault You can add an advantage to all of your combat checks there, um, dish, till the end of my next turn. Okay. Okay, so you moved one at range increment. Got it. Mm-hmm. All right. Done. Next, dish. All right. Dish. Dish, of course, follows his leader's uh, lead and uh, moves, uses a maneuver to move after he's uh, seen the explosive being set. Mm-hmm. And to try and increase maybe uh, the chances of getting uh, maybe a second one of those drone uh, groups. Try to hack them to, uh, to, pi- to, to, to pilot and stay close to that first group. Okay. Increase the chance of getting caught in the blast. Okay. So that would be a computer's hacking check. Don't yeah. forget to add your advantage to that because it yep, is an attack. Have... Exactly. So I do have my di- a blue dice just set up as an advantage to remind me. <laughs> so Difficulty to I, hack these particular drones. These are police drones. It's going to be hard. Right. right. Okay. Our problem. Uh, now, do I use one of the programs? Uh I haven't uh, played an Android, especially as a hacker. Well, we're using it kind of more narratively right. as okay. opposed to a structured hacking encounter. All right. So Not a problem. Um, in the narrative uses, you needn't worry about the programs. Okay. However, I don't have a problem with because you have a, a large plethora of tools mm-hmm. on your deck, on your pad. Um, yeah. I don't mind you getting boost die from that. Oh, boost die for the proper tools. He's got to, yeah, he's got yeah. a few programs, a few icebreakers. tools for the job, yeah. All right. Nice. nice. All right. So I will, that's my advantages there, my talent. Uh, all right. All right. So let's do, I'll spend a story point because, you know, well, it's important to uh, to not get found, found because out. Reasons but, uh, reasons. 
Yeah, exactly. So I'm adding a green to my three yellow. All right. I will be spending a GM story point because every time a computer is used to access a drone, uh, uh, that computer's IP address can be tracked later on. Exactly. All right, then. All right, let's go for it. Do, do, do. So that's all that. Do, do, do. Cancel that. And I'm left with a success and a tr- two successes and a triumph and two advantages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. So it's three minion groups. Mm-hmm. Are you saying you want to? You you you've definitely have hacked. One group to make it fly like right on top of another. Yes. Right. Um, Do you Uh, want to pick randomly or do you want to pick a specific one, two, or three? uh, uh, Pick randomly. uh, Let's say. Randomly, I'll roll then. All All right. right. It will be group one. All right. That's why I hack group one. Mm -hmm. All right. To be close to the other group, whatever group that is that uh, That we hope. Right. And the advantages, well, uh, any cameras that are on on, on any of these are, are blurred. Uh, there's some smoke coming out of one of the vents nearby in this alley from a restaurant nearby. Nice. I like it. And, nice. Uh, <laughs> and the triumph. Uh, I have an example. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Uh, you could uh, have it affect both of both. the other two groups and have all three of them together. There you go. Yeah, they were flying in a very tight formation because they have to. There's lots of other duct work and clothes lines or power lines that forces them into a funnel. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> all right. Awesome. So the first group to fly through yeah. uh, is the group you actually controlled. Mm-hmm. Um or, or sorry, is the group is the actually is the cam drones, Chris. Ah, um, so awesome. um, there's four group, uh, cam drones in that minion group. Okay. Uh, so they are going to have a soak of one, and they're going to have a um, wound threshold of eight. Mm. So your five damage takes them to three um, uh, wounds, and then you activated. The blast Blast. to get everything in engaged range. So that gets all the other drones. So all the other cam drones are gone. All the cam drones. Completely wiped out that main group. Sweet. Um, The combat drones, however, have a soak of three. Vicious. Oh, Uh, vicious too. Sorry. That's different. Okay. So they have a soak of three, and the damage they're going to take is eight. So they're each going to take five. So, grand total uh, number of drones knocked out of the air was um, six with that grenade. Wow, and nice. I, I, look at, I look at Dish, and I'm like, not so bad for someone who doesn't normally do that. <laughs> I like, hey, I should do that more often instead of throw them. <laughs> All right. So the combat drone minion groups are both going to open up on you guys. Okay. Um, and so they begin with a, let's see. So there's only two minions in each. So it's a single upgrade. Cool. They have agility. Oh, could I take a set for two strain, a second maneuver to get them to cover? <laughs> Oh, your turn's over with. Oh, I know, not, I know. No backsies, buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they're, they're, they maneuvered forward Okay. also, so they are going to maintain their medium range medium. Okay. Um, with their single maneuver. Then uh, they're minions, so they can't take any more than one maneuver. One on each uh, of us? Uh, or, yep. They're, okay. they're one minion group each. Okay. Um, so medium range is two purple dice, and they have... Uh, a yellow and two green each. I do have range defense of one, by the way. So, so do first, I. I'll go after you. Range Boss. defense of one. Yep. And I think that's. I don't have anything that allows me to. Nope. I'm not that kind of a leader. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I think I'm good. Okay. Auto fire rapidity action. I use that. Nope. Good. I'm good. Okay. All right. So um, it's a. Exactly a wash. I had no successes, no nothing left over after that so one. I'm dodging and right. driving so, at yeah, the sides just... of the... 
Run. So the uh, concrete and um, and water from the night before's rain are just kicked up as gotcha. the, the Fletcher the light Fletcher pistols on these drones hits the the area around you, but nothing. Cool. All right. So Stefan, do you have any range defense? Yeah, I do have one point. Okay, one point of range defense. Mm-hmm. Are you happy with my pool? Uh, I'll spend a story point to upgrade because, you know, there's been all kinds of stuff flooring around that might uh, hamper their other abilities. So. That's right. Okay. All right. Oof. All right. Um, I end up with a net of two successes, a triumph, and a despair. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, um, I have an idea for the despair, by the way, when you're done adjudicating right. the others, I think. So the, right. two, so successes, three. the two successes are um, the hit you. Uh, damage mm-hmm. is going to be six. All right. So of three. So I'm going to take three. The triumph, uh, <laughs> when they shot at you, um, they the, the rounds stitch up the street. Right. There's an electrical box oh, on the side of the wall with uh, cables coming out of it, and um, mm-hmm. they hit that, and the cables fall to the ground, creating this electrified surface in front of you guys. Oh, all right. Where there's electricity just shot through these puddles of water. Multiple mm. puddles, multiple. Mm-hmm. It's going to be difficult terrain ahead of you. Got it. Oh, okay. okay. Sounds Despair? Like extra. Despair, I have an idea with, uh, with an the idea? monofilament. Yeah, with the monofilament explosion, like I was describing earlier, with the, it funneled them into a, a smaller area with various line power lines. Well, some of those power lines, uh, they, they hit with their Fletchers, and it, they're waving around, and they're falling onto that, uh, that minion group, sort of electrocuting them. Maybe, maybe, it takes out them. One. maybe it takes out one, kind of use it as a triumph where you can, you know, crit the yeah, minion take and take one out. So maybe one of one them out. flies into a power line. Yeah. <laughs> <loads. And laughs> nice. Nice. I'll take that out of uh, the, the minion group you controlled. Yeah. I'll take it out of there. So that's down to one minion. Cool. Um, because it makes one sense. Drone. That that, yeah. You made it, you messed with yeah. its flying enough that it flew right yeah. into a power line. There you go. Okay. okay, so that's it for round one. Uh, round two, mm-hmm. first player. All right. Uh, there's still one drone of that one I control. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that was one with uh, with cameras or a, a gun drone. All the cam drones are gone. They're all combat oh, okay. drones. Now, right. so if you if you allow me, I'll I'll since I still have control of that one. Go for it. Uh, give it give it directions to fire on the other group of drones. Okay. Nice. Um, that would be a computer's hacking check. All right. And difficulty is because there's only one drone left. I'll reduce the difficulty down right. to average. Average. All Here's right. a question for you, Tony. I hmm? activated a, an ability called coordinated assault, which adds an advantage to all of his combat checks technically this isn't a combat check but he is making technically it, it is he is attacking okay. using his hacking okay skill. Yeah. cool okay yeah. yeah so it's uh so you could get it you'll get a, an advantage on this then an advantage okay so I did. perfect all right and i'm not going to upgrade okay i on the other hand am because <laughs> right. you are moving yeah. through an electrically charged area now right all right that'd be a great despair for you to stand yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's see if I can just control it. Oh yeah, no despair. Okay, it's just uh, it's just a, a threat that can, cancels by that advantage. I'm left with uh, a success and two advantage. Okay. Two successes. Sorry, no, no, one success, two advantage. Blah. All right, so the ranged point. light, uh, the light Fletcher that they have. Uh, does four damage, and you said you had two successes. Uh, no, one success to advantage. One success. So one success makes it five damage. With a soak of three, only two is going to get through. All right. Uh, I don't know how. Where was crit? Oh, was sorry, it sorry, my bad. They have pierce two on their so on their weapon. Fletcher. 
so uh, actually four gets through. Okay, which I which means I would have taken two more wounds. So I'll just yes, so that's fine. Is the crit rating two? Like the crit rating system? is two. Okay, uh, so there I'll activate go. a crit. Does that include and take out the another extra, Does that include the advantage? The extra advantage I gave you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. Ah, oh, nice. Yep, I okay, so I did, did not forget that. <laughs> so a crit on a minion group will take out an extra minion. So therefore, that minion group is now down to one, one minion with four wounds, or with um, sorry, with um, one wound. Uh, okay, and uh, I'll just take. Uh, it's difficult, even if it's a difficult terrain. I'll still uh, mo- still try to move away. So so that takes two maneuvers, kind of thing, to uh, two strain, to a two second strain. maneuver to get right. through that area to carefully navigate the right. electrified puddles. That's it. All right, so I'll do that. Okay. Moving away. Okay. Chris, what is Boss doing? Boss is going to stay in um, Dish's hip pocket. So I'm going to take my maneuvers, my two maneuvers to move with him. So we're kind of mm-hmm. moving together, right? Okay. Yeah. But my cool. action will be. So that would mean these guys are now at long range from me? Yes. Or did they move to medium? They're still they're at long range. They were okay. maintaining medium range. You've now moved to long range. Long range. Okay. Right. What I am going to do then is I am I would really like to get my my uh, sl- my hacker dish out of harm's way. I am actually going to inspire him with some rhetoric uh-huh. <laughs> and make an average <laughs> leadership check. Um, and I will allow him. No, not inspiring rhetor- rhetoric. Field commander. Sorry inspire him with my words and um he can make an immediate if i'm successful you can spend one strain and perform one maneuver out of turn now he's already spent two does that count or not i do believe it doesn't exceed the cap is that it um, won't it won't count against it i don't have all the details here but well that's what uh, i want to do i want him to move some more Right. I can't recall if it will allow you to exceed the cap or not. We can look that up real quick. It's not like uh, it's not going to hurt anything, you know. Uh, I don't have every talent memorized, though. I know. No, you uh, don't. But you know, Tony, you do have a podcast. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what what talent was that again? That would be um, um, uh, field, field commander. commander. Field commander. So that is a tier three talent, correct? Mm, tier um, two or tier three. Suffer one strain out of turn. If there are any questions, it does not say, so I have no problem with it. It does not specifically, implicitly say, does not exceed the two. It allows you to exceed the two maneuvers per turn cap. Sounds good to me. All right. So then I. On the fly, I know it may have been called by the devs in another place, but on the fly, I'm going to say, go for it. And this is what I do. Sounds good. I have. I have three yellows for my leadership check. It is an average check. Okay. Um, would you like to do anything to this? And this will be my action for the round. And, I and maybe, take my maybe gets a boost dice because we've been working together so far, but I know he has my back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's not, I don't see the nod or anything. Probably not, right? No. He's like, just roll no. it. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Do you, want, do, you want to, do, do you want to do anything to this? I'm, I'm asking for the boost dice on my friend's roll. <laughs> well, it gets you out of harm's way, so it's kind of benefiting yeah. you go here. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> All right. So three yellow, two purple, and a red, or and a blue. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. All right. I <laughs> am not successful. Are you kidding me? No. But All I do you have, needed was success. <laughs> but I do have four advantage. Um, let's see here. I'm going to shove him into cover if I can. Can I move? Can yeah. I just kind of shove him into cover? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I will, well, yeah. Maybe, right. it, maybe that gives me an additional defense if I'm being fired upon. Well, you are being fired upon. So there cover. You go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there That's are it. two drones. Uh, two separate minion groups. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to come together as one and become right. one minion group uh-huh. uh, so of what, two drones. So what? Uh, what which are, with a total of six wounds. Okay. So what? Um, 
what is he controlling? Or they're acting he's, independently. He's, he's just giving them commands on his turn to do stuff. But, yes, they're okay, still they're moving still, on their turn independently, it. but he's giving oh, them right. commands that quickly countermand what they do, yeah. and they all right. and they're, they're, and right. they correct. They're still right. doing their switch thing. frequencies, okay. you know, so on and so forth. But mm. um, so they've come together, um, okay, and yeah. maneuver oh, together. The head. <laughs> maneuver flying through the over the difficult terrain, not having to worry about it. Because they're flyers, so they just uh, they get into medium range and they open fire together um, Uh, on uh, one of you. I'm I'm the one Uh, on one of you. I got that. I'm gonna roll even odd because Stefan's odd. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be even. Hey, I like Um, to use the term queer. (laughs) Well, I was still I was still gonna say it's odd, but yeah. Um, Even or queer. <laughs> I was talking about dice. I know, I know. <laughs> um, Chris, yeah, do man. you want to do anything to my pool? It's, um, it's, I, it's do a, have, I do have range it sits at one. Okay. It's, it sits at um, a yellow, two green, two purple, and a black. Um, let's see. You know what? Because there is some electricity static kind of going around in the area. Yeah, let's flip one. Why not? Yeah, there you okay. go. I uh, will upgrade one of my perps to a red. And haha, the red came back blank this time. Mm. However, I only mm-hmm. had a singular success and a singular advantage when it was all said and done. Okay. So I can't crit with one advantage. Um, it's got a bead on you. It's yep. got a laser sight on you. Okay. Uh, we'll pass a boost die to the next friendly on its side, right. uh, <laughs> which will be itself. <laughs> um, and it's going to do the five wounds soakable with two pierce. Pierce. Okay, so I have a soak of five, so I will take those two that you do pierce through then. Okay. All right. All right. Well, and uh, a third and final round. All right. All right. Go I'll, ahead, leader. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and take a maneuver to draw my Fletcher rifle. Um, okay. Which gives me so there you said they're medium range, right? Yes, sir. Okay, my combat shotgun is short range, so yep, Fletcher rifle, take that out. Um, nothing. Hold steady. Do not increase auto fire. Okay. All right. Yep. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna shoot him with my Fletcher rifle. Okay. Oh, I got ranged heavy. Yep, it's ranged. No. Yep, ranged it's heavy. It's ranged heavy. So that's one yellow, two green, medium range you said. So that's going to be two purple. Um, I'm actually I'll spend two. So spend a maneuver to draw it. I'm going to spend a maneuver to second maneuver to aim. So I'll take two strain. Add a boost die to that. Let me see anything special about. This is the first time you guys have used a ranged attack against them. They have yeah. ranged defense. <laughs> ranged defensive two. Two. Okay. Huh. Alrighty. Um. Do we have any story points on our side? You have a single story point on your side. Okay. Would you now, like to use it? Oh, I would, because it's one of those things where mm-hmm. my fear, man, failing. I don't want to lose my team, baby. Yeah. I want to get rid of these okay. guys. So I'm going to change one of those yellows or greens to a yellow. Okay. Do you want to do anything to my pool? No, I'm happy. Okay. So I have two yellow, a green, two purple, two black, and a blue. Very colorful. Come on. Okay. That does that. Cancels. Sweet. One success. Two um, advantage. So I'm going to do f- five damage, pierce two. Okay. Five damage, pierce two. So it's going to soak one and take four of that. Okay. Um. I will actually activate Blast 4, so it'll be Blast 5. That'll take out the last drone. Sweet! Awesome. <laughs> you just, yeah. And when you hit this one drone, the two of them had come together. Yeah. And because Dish was kind of fighting with the yeah. one, they're flying almost too close together, and they just... 
nice. fly right into each other and explode. Nice. And I cool. grab a dish and I'm like, find us a, find us a path out of here. <laughs> yes, sir. And because, <laughs> and because that's end of encounter normally, I'd have you guys roll a strain. However, all the story points are on the GM side. And so, cliffhanger, I'm going yeah. to flip one of those and you hear, oh. and you see a police air vehicle fly <laughs> over the rooftop. Oh. <laughs> bum, Did they bum. see up that? Maybe not. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. If, <laughs> nice. If there had still been some uh, some drones left, I would have hacked them and uh, tried to have them like mm-hmm. land into the electrified water. <laughs> nice. nice. That would have been great, dude. I like it. Yeah, you could you could have totally tried that before I before I shot him if you oh, wanted. Okay. To. Right. Oh, it's okay. Sweet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is advantageous threats. Yes, that was awesome. All right, everybody. Well, that is our show for today. That was fun, Tony. Love playing those characters, buddy. Oh, such, thanks. A, such a great job on those. Uh, I had right. help. A little bit. We helped you a little bit, but yeah, you I came had, out I of the brain some of, of my players. Mm-hmm. Um, you and Daryl and my buddy Dave and my son Sean all got together, and we had a character generation session. That's true. And then I tweaked them. After and they, uh, that's how we ended up with those pregens. Yeah, buddy, nice. that's awesome. That was awesome. Okay, so everybody, whether you like it or not, 2020 is coming to an end. <laughs> Thank the fucking <laughs> lord. Pardon my French, but good god, can we? <laughs> I know. Can we just end this year? And yes, the year yeah. to end all years. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So yeah, the year in memorium. I don't know. We may have to come up with a. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, the year that we're supposed to be with... double crits. <laughs> oh, the next episode is going to be the end is nigh. The end is yeah. nigh. <laughs> yeah, it, is. it sure is. <laughs> or I thought you were going to maybe do something like it was a um, it was a critical despair of a year, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that's our show. Um, well, yeah, we're gonna are gonna wrap up the year and look back on it next time. Um, no, no listener feedback this time, so. Mm. Say quiet Great on show, that front. Guys. Great show, gentlemen, tonight. That was fun, yeah. man. So if you'd like to give us some feedback, um, we'll uh, tag team the contact information here. I, You can reach out to us via email at uh, findingthenarrativepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us as well on, on Facebook. Tony and I are there and you can usually reply uh, fairly quickly. And then we're also at Finding the Narrative on Maywe, and you can talk to all of us there and chat or uh, post. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, I manage our uh, Twitter account at FTN underscore Genesis. Always uh, I have a few people uh, who have reached out and chatted once in a while uh, with me. That's always good. And you can drop us a line or a review on the places where we're listened to, and that is uh, Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Amazon Music, and more. So this is Tony saying, let's tell a story and spend a story point. And this is Stefan saying, dare to ask for those boost dice. And this is Chris telling you all to remember the rule of cool. Also, remember to show up for your training on how to use a monofilament grenade without throwing it, <laughs> like Boss Trang <laughs> did. He missed that session, totally did. But he did, it, but it paid off. But yeah, have fun. <laughs> yep, he got the cliff notes, at least. He sure he applied them, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Au revoir. Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast, is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on this show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. 
copyright 2020, all rights reserved.